You've covered sports a lot over your time. Um, enough. You ever been in the locker room before covering sports? I have not. Donnie, have you ever seen Any Given Sunday? Yes. Yeah, I have too, by the way. I'm just making sure. I don't want to <laughs> ask you if you've ever seen a movie before. When I heard this story, I thought of Any Given Sunday because, and Ian, this was one of the scenes that Ian was a, the biggest fan of. It was funny because when we went to go see the movie, Ian, Ian loves this scene in Any Given Sunday. There's a scene where uh, Cameron Diaz walks into the locker room. Remember this scene? Donnie, you remember this scene in Any Given Sunday? Yep. Uh, yeah, I do. Now, did you hear the way Donnie answered that question? <laughs> it, nothing was weird to me about what, how he answered it. No, I can hear it. Donnie, why did you answer that question about whether or not you remember this scene this way? Tell us about your experience watching this scene in Any Given Sunday. Well, I haven't seen Any Given Sunday in a while, but this scene has full frontal in it. Does it not? Like, yeah, that, that's something that I remember. <laughs> see, now, 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 see, Rachel, you you couldn't pick up on that because as, I know I've seen it. I know, but as young dudes in like a non-porn setting, see, when you're watching porn, you expect to see the biggest cocks in the world. You, just, you know, it's like, hey, it's part of the thing. You expect to okay. see, but when you're just watching the movie, and Cameron Diaz goes into the uh, in, into the locker room, and all of a sudden. <laughs> some ginormous Oliver Stone knew what he was doing. All of a sudden, some ginormous cock wagon is right in the pit. It was jarring. It was like, oh shit. Um, but I always thought about that when I thought about the locker room and what we we're talking about. Cause I thought she can just walk in a locker room like that at any time and it's like open. And apparently the NFL players don't really like that. They don't, they don't want that because. They are now talking about the fact that they want the locker room to remain a little bit safe, uh, more sacred. The, the NFLPA uh, put out a statement that says, over the past three years, the NFLPA has tried to work with NFL and Pro Riders of America to move media interviews out of the locker room. However, there's been very little willingness to collaborate on new so solutions. Players feel that locker room interviews invade their privacy and are uncomfortable. This isn't about limiting media access, but about respecting the players' privacy and dignity. The NFL's current media policy is outdated. We, the NFL PA Executive Committee, urge the NFL, uh, urge the NFL to make immediate changes to foster a more respectful and safer workplace for all players. In the meantime, we encourage each player to ask for interviews outside the locker room during the week. This became like a big deal about whether or not limiting media access inside of the locker room is actually choking journalists' opportunity to do their job or whether or not it's infringing upon the, the, the sacred aura of the locker room, the sanctity of the locker room, and of the players who are fucking naked sometimes. Hmm. I guess I don't understand why journalists can't wait I mean, other than it takes a long time for players sometimes to come out of the locker room, um, you know, after they shower and get dressed and maybe, you know, like they want it quick so they can get their story out in a quicker way or report it back. Um, I that's just what, don't That's what people have been saying, by the way, that some of these guys, ladies and men are on deadline yeah. and they need to get to the players as fast as possible. Yeah. I mean, yeah, because they can't really get to them on the field when they're going back. And then of course the press conference only has a few players in there. And so there's specific players that they want to target. I mean, the pro writer, football writers of America said that requests for interview views outside the locker room has always been part of the agreement in place. So it sounds like these players can say, wait till I get out of the locker room or I'm not taking any interviews in the locker room. I'll take them outside. So if the, if what pro football writers of America saying is true, then I don't understand why we have an issue. How can these players on one hand complain unless they weren't aware of this? How can they on one hand complain about journalists being in the locker room when they have the right to request them to stay out? I don't understand. So I think there are two things going on right here. And I do think it really has to do with journalism, right? 
Mm -hmm. I think the journalists are going to tell you that we want as much access to the players' emotions in the aftermath of a game as possible. We don't want them to get the opportunity to really think on what they're going to say. We want the real emotions and reactions from players. When you think about, think about, remember, I don't know if people remember this. Remember when Kellen Winslow II, who turned out to be a fucking maniac, mm -hmm. you remember when he is interviewed outside the locker room, it's like, no, nah, man, I'm pissed. All y'all take this down. I'm pissed, man. We don't care about nobody except this you. We don't. If I didn't hurt him, he'd hurt me. They're gunning for my legs. I'm going to come right back at him. I'm a soldier. They mm -hmm. want moments where they get the unbridled emotion of the player. When Michael Strahan was, was in the locker room, I can think about a bunch of iconic locker room interviews where he looked like he was eating a hot dog or a peanut butter and jelly sandwich or something like that. And he, he tells this reporter, he goes, All right, so come here, I want to see your face. Please, part so I can see your face. Are you are a responsible journalist and look me in the eye asking me this question? Please. The way that, that um, well, you want to ask it, come here. Look a man in the eye before you try to kill him or make up something. I think they want those moments. And they feel like if they wait, then they're not getting to the truth of things that happen on the field and other storylines that are emanating from the locker room. Mm. I think the players, to be honest with you, uh, both want to cut down on that. They don't want as much access to them right after the game. Fair. And Tory Smith said, who's a great follow on Twitter, by the way, if only y'all knew how awkward some of the male reporters act. Straight meat watchers. So he's saying that he's in the locker room getting ready. You know what I mean? And they, they got some guys in there that are checking out his Johnson meat wagon. And he doesn't like it. And I heard that a lot. A lot of players were saying that. A lot of players were, you know, like how Donnie felt when he watched the in, Any Given Sunday scene, how it changed Donnie's life, how it changed Ian's life. And a lot of players don't really want that to, hap to, to happen, you know? Well, I think that's fair. If they feel uncomfortable, then let stop making them feel uncomfortable. It's and and if everybody, if every reporter is not allowed to come inside, then you're all on equal footing. So you're waiting outside, you wait however long it is, and you wait for your story. Nobody's rushing ahead of the ex the next person. You just all wait there in a room, outside the locker room, in the tunnel, whatever it may be. But if players feel uncomfortable, I'm all about the players here. Like, mm. they just played a hard game. Uh, they're tired, frustrated if they lost. Uh, if they just want to, like, I, I wouldn't want to also have to worry about strangers in the locker room who are just trying to get a story. Mm. And I respect journalism, obviously, but I'm just saying, I think that there's a common ground here. And that common ground is outside of the locker room. That's my opinion. We didn't get a chance to do it today, but I want to keep talking about this story. I want to bring on Sheena Quick, okay. who is a lady that covers the Carolina Panthers, the beat reporter for the Panthers. I want to talk to her and maybe some other people about how things are going. Because look, if guys are you know naked in there, they feel like they don't want to... It's different. It's a different era. This is updating of the software. Updating the software. This might this might have been software. That, it might have been okay in 98, 99, everybody naked dicks out all of that stuff to interview somebody it's in a towel or whatever you know it, but players might have different sensitivities now you might have to update it so I want to talk to Sheena about that we'll bring her on the podcast um, you guys do me a favor go to Ian Vaughn's Twitter or Ian Vaughn his Instagram Ian Vaughn alright or the Can We Talk R&B Instagram can We Talk R&B podcast is going so well for Ian Vaughn. I am so proud of my boy, right? He's, it's going so well, man. He's put so much into it. He's such a good interviewer. He continues to grow. The podcast continues to grow. I think he's going to have one of the biggest music podcasts uh, in the world by mid-2025. He's doing such a great job, and he takes it so seriously. He's a great podcaster. Very talented, man. But he also loves that scene from Any Given Sunday. So I want you guys to go <laughs> into his uh, comments and tag him and tag me and said, at Van Lathan wants to know what your favorite scene from any given Sunday is. We've been talking about this for since the movie came out. Like, we left the movie and he was like, bruh, 
Like this movie was amazing, especially the locker room scene. He said it even back then. So anybody that does that, I'll follow you back. Anybody that does that. Why you taunt your friends you like that? Like poor Ian. Like him. this is so unnecessary. It's been going on for years. <laughs> this same thing has been going on for years. Because we were in the movie theater. <laughs> we got the, it. The scene, so we got the scene it. came on and Ian was like, damn. I was like, what? Whoa. <laughs> 